Hello, welcome to this presentation and thank you for tuning in. Uh, the focus of this discussion is on the Hasset group of uh, organisms. But before I go further, I would like to uh, present a scenario you can very easily relate to. And that scenario is this. Suppose you have three sisters or three daughters, okay, and their names are Jessica, and the other one is Edith, and then you have Brenda. Now you decide to form an acronym using the first letter of each of these. So you have a J and an E and a B. So you have a JEB. So this acronym, as far as you are concerned, refers to Jessica for the J, E for the edit, and B for Brenda. All right? Now, what if then you have a situation where somebody is trying to figure out whether you can distinguish your daughter's name or your sister's names by putting up the following combinations. A, that um, you have a Janet and an Edith and uh, let's say Brianna, okay? And B, you have a Jessica, you have um, an Edith or Edith and then um, a Brenda and C you have uh, a Judy uh, you have Elaine and uh, Bridget okay and then D would be let's say uh, let's say none of the above that's good none of the above now keep in mind the acronym we started with was J E B and we said that uh, J is for Jessica and that E is for Edith that's what we started off with and that the B is for Brenda right now if someone says to you which of the following here refers to the correct acronym for your daughters or your sister's names obviously the correct answer will be this it will be easy for you to fish out the correct one by just scanning through because you know them for someone who doesn't know exactly what this acronym stands for they are left to do some guesswork in each of these three cases you have a j e b a j e b a j e b but none of them fits perfectly as this one here that's number B. So this is what this um, subject is about. That you have the ability to recognize what this acronym stands for, has it. Now, that is what it stands for. The H stands for Haemophilus species and uh, notably H. Afrophilus. Uh, other species in the group include H. para influenza and H. para afrophilus. The A stands for actinobacillus, actinomycetum committans. And the C stands for cardiobacterium hominis. And then the E stands for echinella corrodens. And the K stands for kingella species notably Kingella kingae. Uh, there are three species of Kingella that have uh, clinical importance here. Uh, there are Kingella kingae here and then Kingella detrificans and Kingella indulgens. But I put this here because that's the one that you know you find repeatedly showing up in clinical cases. So is the situation here. And uh, note also that um, other than this first one here, the Haemophilus species and then the Kingella, these ones are the actual species involved. Alright? So this is what you have to memorize. There is no shortcut to it. And my recommendation to you would be to have flashcards. 
nothing works like flashcards. Flashcards will enable you take a look at them from time to time and remind yourself what you are missing. And um, that way you would, you know, be in a position to correct yourself. By the way, I think I missed out um, an M here. My setup committance. Okay. Now in the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how this could, you know, play in an exam situation. Now let us look at some of the common characteristics of... Uh the Hasset group of organisms. <clears throat> they are generally gram-negative bacteria. Uh, some of them, like the Haemophilus species, are pleomorphic and uh, cocobacillary in shape. So are the um, uh, species here, the of uh, uh, C. Uh, C. hominis would be somewhat um, gram-variable as well as pleomorphic, rod-shaped and uh, bulbous, swelling at both ends. And uh, other than that, you could lump them all together as gram-negative uh, bacteria or bacilli. They are found as part of the normal oral flora where they colonize the oropharynx. In other words, you could call them commensal. They are generally you know, harmless when they are in these uh, locations except the area is breached, then they can cause infection when introduced into a healthy tissue. They tend to form, uh, they have the potential to form abscesses and um, become uh, invasive as a result. They also require increased carbon dioxide for growth, about 5 to 10 percent of carbon dioxide. And then um, they are commonly associated with uh, endocarditis specifically infective endocarditis and um, when I talked about uh, the hemophilus for instance um, I told you that they are, they, are, they, they are in a species so you don't have to memorize all the species involved but it will be noteworthy to note that uh, hemophilus influenza uh, is not part of this age this H here, H species, represents Haemophilus species and uh, refers to three species only. Uh, Haemophilus afrophilus, Haemophilus parainfluenza, and Haemophilus parafrophilus. Same thing here with uh, Kingella. So these two, there are three species of importance in each of them. In the Kingella, uh, you, you have genus, you have the following species, Kingella kingei, Kingella denitrificans, de and um, Kingella indulgens. Now that's what um, you should know about the characteristics. But the most important thing here is to recognize what organisms belong to this group, this acronym H A C E T stands for HASEC. Now, having said that, I will then show you how a question could be asked in the exam and you should be ready to you know, answer it correctly. Now here is a typical example of uh, the kind of question you should anticipate in the exam. This says, which of the following bacteria does not belong to the Hasset group of organisms? Does not belong. So one of these here does not belong. And I have Kingella kingei, Escherichia coli, Cardiobacterium hominis, Haemophilus afrophilus. What I've done here is to introduce an organism whose genus is Escherichia, therefore it has the E there. So if you are not fully aware and you want to take a guesswork, you might think, oh yeah, this might be this here. Or that this is uh, that, and that this is that, fine. 
and that this represents this. But then, you know, if you know the members, the component members of this group, you would immediately recognize that Esterasia cola is not part of it. And that will be the correct answer. So there are a variety of ways a question could be asked uh, based on your knowledge of what organisms belong to this uh, group. And uh, all it boils down to is that you do a lot of um, flashcard reviews of the names of organisms associated with uh, this group. And uh, with that, I would um, wish you the very best of luck as you prepare for your exams. And thank you for tuning in. There will be more discussions of this sort in the series to follow. Thank you.